Hey, what's up everyone? It's Joe from Gadgetry Tech and in today's video I'm going to talk about DACs and amps for your PlayStation 5. So the goal of this is to help you understand what you can get out there, what gives you the best sound quality, what's worth it or not, and hopefully by the end I help to make your purchasing decision a little bit easier. Now there's a lot to cover, I have a lot to say, so this video is going to be a little bit on the longer side and I will have chapters below to help in case you only care about a particular product or segment. However, during the video and during the discussion of other products, I hope to share some useful information. So if you can and you have the time, I suggest watching this from start to finish because it's really the best way to understand uh, what to get. I will have purchase links in the description below. So if there's something here that you like that you want to buy, it does help support the channel, but also helps you find the product to learn more about it. As always, just purchase it wherever you feel comfortable. Now, if you find this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'd love to see you at the next video. And with that being said, let's dive in. So what is a DAC? Now the literal translation is digital to analog converter. What that means in this case is it's taking a digital signal from the PS5, you know, through the USB connection and turning it into an analog signal, which is basically the sound waves that's powering your headset or headphone. Now a good DAC will sound good. It won't have hiss or static or hum and other random issues and it should have good clean power. I'm simplifying this greatly because I can't focus too much on the technical side here. The video will get too long, but ultimately a DAC is an important piece to your audio. And if the DAC or unit is designed poorly, you're gonna suffer from that. So I will mention if there's some that aren't as good here from an audio quality performance, but I also wanna talk about features. I do wanna note just so I don't forget, Tempest 3D Audio, the 3D audio feature built into the PS5 for uh, rendering games in a virtual space, that's all compatible with everything I discuss here. Tempest 3D Audio works with everything because the Sony PS5 is rendering it inside the console. So whether you plug a headphone in or a headset to your controller directly, or you use any of these DACs, you'll still get to benefit from the 3D audio. So I just wanna cover that now, don't worry about it. So moving on, it's important to know what kind of DAC you need and if you even need one at all. The PS5 controllers are actually really nice, at least from a sound quality perspective, and they actually have a lot more power output than some people expect. This is the Edge controller, so it's a little bit different, but I have a reason why I grabbed this, I'll talk about it afterwards. However, this connects to your console via Bluetooth. Now, a lot of people hear Bluetooth and automatically think the sound quality is gonna be poor. Sony has some pretty good Bluetooth codecs out there. And if it basically uses a special codec to connect to the console with very good quality sound, it is not compressed like your typical cheap Bluetooth headset or headphone out there. So the sound quality is imperceptible to a lot of people. And depending on what kind of headset you use, this may be all you need. The microphone preamp built in, which is basically boosting your analog microphone so your friends can hear you talk, is actually quite loud on this as well. In fact, it's more powerful than an Xbox controller. So even if you have a headset with a fairly weak microphone, you can boost that in the PlayStation software. The other concern that some people have with this is latency. Now, because this is using a special codec, the latency is actually the same or better than some wired DACs. In fact, you can actually configure PlayStation controllers to work in USB audio mode through the controller settings on PlayStation, but the sound quality difference is basically imperceptible, imperceivable. Uh, you can't really tell the difference, and it also actually has a measurably worse latency by only a few milliseconds, but you're not gaining anything by doing that, so I recommend just leaving it in Bluetooth mode. So after learning what the DualSense controller does, why would you need a DAC? Well, the answer is a lot of people don't need one. However, if you're looking for more power, more or better features, or perhaps a better uh, sound quality improvement if you can hear the difference. That's where the next portion of this video comes in. So the last housekeeping thing to cover is that the PS5 uses something called UAC1 or USB Audio Class 1. I mentioned that because I covered a good chunk of DACs or I will be covering a good chunk of DACs in this video, but that's not everything that works for the PS5. There's a good chance if you find a DAC online that says it supports UAC1, it could and should work with the PS5. However, you always want to do your research. So if I missed one you were interested in and it's not in this video, I'm sorry. I can only cover so many in a reasonable amount of time. But I feel like this selection covers a good majority of what people are looking to gather from. So the first DAC we're discussing today is the Fosse Audio K5 Pro. This is an $80 MSRP DAC, but on Amazon, it's typically in the low $60 range, which is kind of cool considering what you get. This is actually one of the better feeling built DACs here. In fact, it's probably one of the best built DACs from a physical standpoint compared to everything here with exception of maybe the shit hell 2 and the Creative uh, G6. I love the way this thing feels and it's actually all metal, which is awesome as well. Even the knobs up front are metal, so the quality feels great. Now this DAC connects to your PS5 using the included USB-C cable, which always powers it. And what's really special is it has a separate microphone and headphone input. 
This is incredibly important and perhaps the most uh, important uh, and most noticeable beneficial upgrade from using a controller is having the separate mic and headphone jack because of something called crosstalk. Crosstalk is actually inherent and more common in a lot of gaming headsets because of an issue of using a combo port or TRRS. When you have a TRRS plug, which still looks like a 3.5, but you see an extra black band on it, that means that the microphone and the audio drivers themselves on the headset, you know, the speaker part, they share a common ground. And what happens is if you play music or games at a very loud volume, some of that noise gets picked up through that ground signal because of the way alternating current works, and that gets back into your party chat or microphone input on your console. So if you play with friends and you're using a wired analog headset with a single connection to a controller or PC, and your friends tell you they hear the game or you can hear the game play through the speakers, that's because of something called crosstalk, and it's not easy to get rid of because of the way that connection works. So when you get a headset like an Epos H6 Pro, the GSP600 from Epos, or the Drop PC38X, anything that has a dedicated split headphone and microphone connection like this, it comes with two different cables, now you can break out the two and you are no longer sharing a ground. So the benefit from this is that your friends will hear a very clean signal on the microphone side. You typically get better performance anyway, but that's the main advantage of it. Now the back of the K5 Pro actually has a couple cool features in addition to just being a DAC for gaming on PS5. You have an optical input and a coax input which gives you additional sources that you can toggle through and there's an RCA output and the output, the output can be used for like a headphone amp if you want something more powerful than what's built into this for some reason and then there's also the ability to connect that to external speakers or an amplifier to power external speakers. Moving on to the front, you have three volume knobs, and I mentioned they're aluminum, and they're also textured. They feel really nice, but you have bass and treble adjustment. There's no way to turn tone control off to bypass this. You can set it in a zero position, and there's a little detent, so you can kind of feel it stop. The issue I have with the K5 Pro is it doesn't have a neutral sound profile. The 200 hertz region is slightly recessed, so you may lose some of that punch or slam depending on what headset you have. If you have something like the Razer Kraken, which has a lot of mid bass in that region, this might actually be a good pairing because it's gonna clean up the sound a little bit. However, if you have something like an Epos H6 Pro closed back headphone, that has a ton of deep bass, but it doesn't have a lot of bass in the 200 hertz region, so this would make that one sound pretty bad in my opinion. So it kind of comes down to what headset you have. Now, you would think that adjusting bass would help fix that and bring it back up. And to a certain extent, it gets to a point where it does bring it back up, but by boosting deep bass significantly. So if you're using this for FPS and you do that, just keep in mind, that's not really an ideal EQ setting for uh, first person shooters. So this may not be the best purely for FPS, but overall it's great for immersion. It's a really fun amp and it cleans up the sound a lot from the PS5. I do like this. Again, I think it comes down more to the pairing than anything else. The last thing I want to mention is this does get quite loud, but also depending on what headset you connect it to, it can overdrive itself. So if you have a 32 ohm headset, of, uh, which is more common on gaming headsets, SteelSeries, uh, Razer, HyperX, all of those use low impedance. Typically 32 ohms are in that region. And when that happens, if you crank this up, there is some audible distortion coming from this because it's overdriving itself. That's why this thing gets so loud. If you have higher impedance, like the HD6XX, and I think I grabbed one, this is the HD560S from Sennheiser, great FPS headphone, no mic. Um, these have higher impedances, and as a result, they're like 120 ohm, for example, in that case, this won't really distort in that situation. So if you hear distortion, just turn the volume down a little bit. You might be overdriving it. Overall, it's solid for a $60 price range. It's just not without its flaws. So moving on to the Epos GSX 300. Now this is available in white or black. It's a nice DAC. It looks nice. It's really reliable. It's well-made, lightweight, pretty much all plastic. Uses micro USB because this has been out for a while. And it has a separate headphone and microphone uh, connection as well. This is like your most basic form of DAC for this to just split off the headset audio in case you're lucky enough to have two separate connections like the Sennheiser and Epo stuff I mentioned earlier. However, the GSX 300 has no onboard EQ, no extra bells and whistles, and frankly, the PS5 controller gets louder than the GSX 300 to me. So the only reason why you would get this is if you have a very easy to drive headset like a HyperX Cloud or a SteelSeries Nova or Arctis headset, 
and you want to use the two separate connections or even a Sennheiser drop PC38X, for example. If you're okay with a little bit lower volume, this is fine. However, I think in this case, it's outclassed by pretty much everything else here. Now for you headphone players out there, if you don't have a microphone and you don't care for that side, you just want a good amp for your headphones, this was a huge surprise for me. This is the iFi Zen Air and it's only a hundred bucks. It has a full size USB port on the back. It comes with the cable. You do not need to use the uh, five volt input. That's only if USB has no power and it has an RCA output for an external amp in case you wanna use it for speakers. But this is, it's compatible, obviously. It works great on the PS5. It has power match and X base, and these combined, depending on what headphone you, you drive it with, can power larger, much more expensive headphones. So if you have something like the Hi-Fi-Man Araya Stealth or ZMF or Odyssey headset or headphone, this has more than enough juice. So you don't have to spend more than $100 to really power any of those guys. I was actually surprised at how much I liked it. It sounded great and even in games like Call of Duty, um, the performance was impeccable. I had no real latency issues. No really other features to talk about. The volume knob feels nice. It's all plastic, but it feels good. I don't like that the headphone jack is so close to the volume knob because when you're plugged in, you kind of have to rotate it like this, I guess if I had a nitpick. But again, if you're just looking for a headphone amp, don't care about the mic and you're looking for a good bang for your buck, this is a killer price for what you get. Now moving up to the $100 to $130 price range, you have some killer options and this is kind of where you get diminishing returns after this price point because there's just so much good stuff to pick from. So I'm gonna start with the Astro Mixamp Pro uh, TR. This came out in 2019, so it's an older DAC but it was ahead of its time back then. And because this uses an optical input, you can actually connect this on the older PS4 when it had optical, this had game to chat mix. Now, pretty much nothing here really supports game to chat mix because Sony basically leaves the control to that into the console itself. So you have to pull up the on-screen menu to adjust game to chat mix unless you buy a Sony branded headset. However, there is a way to trick that for any DAC that has an optical input because you can connect an optical out from your television or purchase an HDMI audio extractor and in which case, if you did that, this would still have game to chat mix on PS5. So if you want a DAC specifically for that, this is still something to consider. The overall sound quality of this is okay. I think it sounds a little dull in comparison to basically everything else but the, e the GSX 300. It's on the lower end for sound quality in my opinion, uh, but there's some good features. So it's really more for the controls. You, don't, you do have onboard EQs that you can set. The EQ profiles are kind of um, weak for what you can adjust and how extreme. So for mild EQ, it's great. And if you need game to chat mix, it's still a good option to consider. I do like this. It's just the problem is because other DACs have come out that are better now, it's a little bit tougher of a sell. The other thing to keep in mind, this is the whole note of just sneaking in extra info during this video. If you use an HDMI audio extractor to feed an optical connection into this, and it's an HDMI 2.0 extractor, you're stuck at 4K 60 in some cases, as depending on which one you buy. So, which means you lose the 120 frame per second refresh rate, the 120 hertz 4K connection that the PS5 is capable of doing. So it depends on what TV you have. They do make HDMI audio extractors that pass that through, so you still get 4K 120. Or if your TV has an optical out, you can just do it that way and it won't mess anything up. I just wanna cover that because there's another DAC here that has that capability as well. So overall, I do like the controls of this. I like the design because frankly, this is the easiest one to adjust and use if you did get this working. However, if you don't go through all the hassle of the game to chat mix, I wouldn't take this over all of the others in the same price range. So then you have the SteelSeries Game DAC Gen 2, which is the newest one. And this originally came out with the Nova Pro Wired last year. So it's a newer DAC and there's some huge benefits to this one in particular and then some drawbacks. So. I like this unit more than the Astro Mix Amp from a sound quality perspective. It actually sounds better at the same volume. It's just cleaner and a little bit better resolution. So like your subtle details are better. The other advantage with the Game DAC Gen 2 is it has two USB ports on the back, USB-C. And depending on which version you get, this is the PC PS5 version, meaning I can connect one of the USB-Cs to my PS5 and the other one to my computer. And now I have a single DAC that auto switches between both platforms with the same headset output. The other thing I like that's nice on this is it has an onboard 10 band customizable EQ. So you can use this multi-function wheel to control the on-screen display, 
and set your own adjustments from the sub bass all the way up into your treble. So you kind of have the ability to do custom EQ on the fly. On the PC side, you have SteelSeries uh, sonar software, so you can also use this as a good uh, mix amp for PC with Game to Chat. However, there's no option to have Game to Chat mix on the PlayStation side. It also has line in and line out to help uh, streamers out there if you want a little bit more versatility to kind of connect this into a computer. You know, if you're trying to merge the two audio streams, this is really one of the only ones aside from the mix amp that can do that. The only thing that I don't like, well, there's two things if I had a nitpick. The headphone output, it's a combo port only, so everything's combined, and it's recessed, meaning that depending on which headphone you have, I think I have most of my cables unplugged, but because it's recessed, some of my headphones can't actually plug into this. You have to buy something like this. This has a, a splitter at the bottom, but I will have a link in the description for adapters that will fit to basically extend it out to connect your normal headphone connection. That's the only thing. I don't know why they recessed it, maybe from a stability standpoint for the Nova Pro, but it kind of stinks from a universal standpoint. The other thing is it's not really loud. It's the weakest one here next to the GSX 300, but it is louder than GSX 300. It's closer to the controller volume. So you're not really getting a benefit purely from output. What you're gaining is all of the other features I talked about for cross-platform and adjustable EQ. Then you have the Sound Blaster X G6, which came out in 2018. Now this was so far ahead of its time that even now it competes really well, if not uh, honestly beats a lot of the decks here, especially for the money. This thing sounds incredible. It's really loud. In fact, it's louder than every other DAC I've covered so far. This in low gain is louder than most of the amps I covered so far. And in high gain, not only does it still sound good, but it has a really good punch to it um, with really no distortion. Now, this is the one of the only other ones here that also has an optical input with the ability to cross the two. So if you are leveraging an optical connection from your TV or an extractor, you can now press the knob in or you can benefit from a game to chat mix using the G6. Kind of a cool feature, it's a bit unique. And you also have the ability to do uh, direct mode, which has no audio processing. Um, there's scout mode and SBX. So I'm not a huge fan of scout mode. It applies like significant compression, which can make footsteps really far away, really loud. But the hard part for me for FPS is that now takes away your ability to perceive how close they are, in my opinion. You can get used to it for a bit, but because it's varying the volume, I couldn't always tell how far people are. I just always knew what direction they were coming from. So I typically leave that off. And then you have SBX, which honestly, that audio chains, the impact and how much fun it makes games sound, I strongly suggest trying it just because it's a blast. Now, what's really cool about the G6 is you can see the headphone jack and the microphone jack. This particular unit has the ability to handle a headset like the Epos H6 Pro I was talking about with the two dedicated mic and headphone jacks, but the headphone jack is also a TRRS port, meaning it's a combo jack. So regardless of what headset or headphone you're using, you can use either combination of these plugs and still benefit from a lot of the performance this has. Now the G6 actually has onboard memory and you can configure everything on the PC. So if you did wanna make some special settings like putting it in direct mode or doing your own custom EQ, all these extra features can be done and enabled on the PC, save it to the G6 and then go plug it into your PS5 and you can benefit from all of those changes. So it's pretty robust. And honestly, if you don't need particular features like the dual platform or chat mix on PC that the uh, game deck is giving you or the way the Astro mix amp works, in this price range, I lean towards the G6. It's just a pretty amazing little unit and it feels nice too. I like the volume knob. Um, it's mostly plastic in a slight way, but the bottom is rubberized, so it still feels uh, really secure. So moving up to the more expensive stuff, now we're getting $200 and up. And the first one is the Epos GSX-1000. On PC, I love the GSX-1000 because it has the best binaural audio engine I've ever heard for gaming. It has this insane virtual soundstage that kind of makes it more immersive than any other DAC I've ever heard. And usually I think that stuff is a gimmick and I always turn it off, but I was pretty shocked at how much fun it made certain game sound, especially open world stuff where you're kind of just playing at night and relaxing. It's really immersive. However, none of those features, even though it's built into the unit, they didn't work for me when I tested on my PS5. So this is basically a more expensive GSX 300 with a little bit more volume output. You do get a dedicated headphone and microphone connection, which is great. This has an analog out to turn this into a DAC for a speaker output. You still need an external amplifier. 
and it has a really nice volume wheel. I like this DAC, but it's much better suited for PC. And at $200, I would not pick it over most other options here. So then you move on to one of my favorites, and that is the Shit Hell 2. Yes, I said shit, uh, but it's uh, spelled differently. So uh, this is a really, really powerful headphone amp uh, and DAC. In fact, it's one, been one of my favorites whenever I test audiophile stuff for gaming. This is usually my go-to on the PlayStation side because of the power output has it has. Now this has two USB-C inputs, but both have to be connected at the same time. One of them is used for power, the other one is used for your connection to the PS5. This does come with a USB-C cable and separate power adapter to make sure that this has enough juice. You have a line out and you also have an optical input. There's no way to merge optical with USB. You basically have a nice toggle switch in the front to switch between both. Actually, that's my gain. This is the switch for your optical uh, versus USB. Now, my favorite thing about this, aside from the power, is you have an analog microphone preamp knob. So this little knob is actually changing how strong the microphone preamp is. It has an excellent mic preamp. So depending on what microphone you use, having that adjustability is really convenient. You also have this giant metal knob. This thing's built like a tank. It's all metal. You basically have a nice black and red brick. But depending on what headset or headphone you have, whether it's something really high end like a kilo buck headphone that needs a lot more juice, it can power that. And if you flick the switch in high game mode, it can probably power a Prius. Now the Hell 2 lacks any ability to customize it. There's no onboard memory. There's no special features. It's basically just a super high powered, very clean, excellent performing amp DAC. If you only care about making your headphones sound the way they're supposed to sound in stock form, this is arguably one of the best ways to do that in this price range. And because it's all done via USB in the single unit, whether you have a mic or not, it's just incredibly convenient. And I love the way this thing sounds. Now on the note of audiophile DAX and amps like the Shit Hell 2, this is another favorite of mine. And I actually bought all the cables and firmware flashing to make this work. So this is the JDS Atom stack. Now the Atom DAC, this bottom unit, can be flashed to support UAC1 to work on the PS5. The newer version, the Atom Plus, which is only $110, that's this bottom unit, is a USB DAC to your PlayStation, then you have RCA outputs. So that means you can use the Atom DAC to connect to any headphone amp you want, whether it's a tube amp or some big monstrosity that you have because you're playing games and you know what? You spent thousands of, thousands of dollars on an amp and you wanna use it for PlayStation? This is a really good way to do that. Now, they also make a matching amp, which brings the total price just over $200. So if you like this stack, this is an excellent option as well, but at 200, there's no support for a microphone. So that brings you back to the hell too. Now they do offer a breakout cable. It's a little 3.5 millimeter adapter that gives the audio output from the Atom to power your headphones and then has a separate microphone cable that plugs into your controller. So if you have a really high powered headset, it's kind of a unique situation, but you have a microphone on it, you can use the controller for the mic and the JDS Atom for the audio. It's a great option, but I mainly wanted to let you know that you could just buy a DAC like that and then use any amp you want. Then you have the Sound Blaster X5 from Creative. This thing is $280 and it's an absolute beast. Now it's not the loudest one here. The Shit Hell 2 and the JDS Atom are noticeably louder than the X5, even if you use the balance connection, but more on that later. So the reason why you would consider something like the X5 is if you just want a specific set of features because this does have a few unique things to it. I'm gonna start with the back. USB-C connection directly to your PS5 or PC. It naturally works for both. You have to unplug and switch. Optical in and out. You can listen to optical at the same time of USB-C, but there's no uh, dedicated game to chat mix on the front. I'll explain how that works in a sec. Line in and line out so you can have an aux input and then send the audio that this is processing back out to another device like an external speaker amp, something like that. Moving on to the front, big old power button, a mute button on the front, and it's the only other DAC outside of the shit hell too that gives you an analog volume knob for your microphone. Now what's cool about this one is this, just like the Creative uh, G6, wherever I put that, that's over here, the headphone out also supports TRRS. So if you have a single headphone connection for your headset that has a microphone built in, plug it into this middle one, the microphone will still work and you can power it with this giant volume knob. So you have two knobs controlling the uh, audio on that single port. If you have something that does break out the connection and you have a separate mic, well, it still benefits the same way. A high low gain switch, a speaker out button. So if you switch this, it changes from headphone out to speaker out. 
You can change some of the digital processing on this to go to direct mode, meaning that it's not processing anything extra, or you can toggle through onboard EQ presets. So if you're gaming, you can save up to four presets on it. You would do that through your computer and then switch through for different game settings. Um, PC and console switch, just put it in console for your PS5. And now the killer feature on this though is the Bluetooth. This is the only one here that has Bluetooth and that's for an input. So what's really, really slick about the X5 is you can pair your phone to this or PC, whatever it may be, and it will merge a wireless signal into your headphone output on your headset or headphone. So if you're playing on your PS5 and you want to you know, listen to YouTube videos or something, watch my channel, of course, between games, you can do that with this and it'll just seamlessly blend the audio. You can control your phone volume separately on the phone itself, or if you use the available creative app, which is on the PC and your phone, there is a digital mixer on the software. So you can boost the volume separately and even change the Bluetooth, optical, and um, even your analog volume that's on the back. You can tune them all through the app, change EQ profiles, etc. This thing is insanely feature rich and it also is the only one that has a balanced connection. Having a balanced connection, meaning it has a dedicated pin for the ground, if you remember talking about grounds earlier, the left speaker has a dedicated wire for the plus and minus, the right speaker has a dedicated for plus and minus. What that means in this case is the X5 is just louder. So if you find that even in high gain mode you need more juice, if your headphone supports a balanced connection with the right cable, you can switch to that and in high gain mode this thing has a serious amount of power. It sounds great, it's very clean, and I love that you can do custom EQ. No real game to chat mix per se from a, a speed standpoint, but if you want just every feature you can imagine for an amp for your PS5, the X5 is the way to go. Now hopefully I don't make your audiophile gear selection journey any more difficult, but I do want to talk about two amazing products. Now this is two microphones from a company called Antlion. This is the ModMic Wireless. It's a little bit more expensive than the Uni, but the wireless has a USB connection wirelessly. It uses a special Bluetooth codec to your PS5, so you get an amazing sounding microphone. And because of the magnetic uh, mount system, you basically have an adhesive disc. You can connect it to a headphone like this and then attach this to any headphone you want and get audiophile sound with audiophile microphone, if you will. So your friends will appreciate and family members will appreciate an excellent sounding mic. The PS5 has a microphone built into their controller. So the DualSense controllers have a mic built in. They just sound terrible. So your friends will appreciate this. They'll actually know what you're saying. And this opens up the floodgates for basically any headphone product you want. That's really handy if you want to use something like the HD 560S, which I think for the $200 and below range is one of the better uh, headphones you can use for gaming. It just sounds great. It has good imaging. So you can still have a good microphone and basically have a class leading gaming headset for a pretty reasonable price. So this was a crazy long video. I covered a lot and I, I really hope that this helped you understand more of what the possibilities are. To simplify things, I do have some favorites, especially when you factor in price, features and sound performance. For a more affordable setup, I absolutely love, even though this is older, the Sound Blaster G6 just sounds so good for gaming. It's what you want when you're gaming. It, having features for like the custom EQ, couple little tricks and bells and whistles to change the sound quality. Game to chat mix if you decide to pursue that, but you don't need it. Separate microphone input so you don't have the crosstalk issue. In high gain, this can drive larger and more expensive headphones. So when you factor all of that in, and even in the small form factor, USB powered, it doesn't take up a lot of space or extra plugs on your wall. I just absolutely love this unit for 120, so I think overall, bang for your buck, it's my top pick. Now naturally, because the iFi Zendac sounds as good as it does with as much power as it has for $100, it's the best value here for driving larger, more expensive headphones that need more juice. It sounds great, and again, because it's USB powered, it's very easy to set up. When you get into more expensive amps that have a microphone, the Shit Hell 2 is usually what I use for something like the VZR Model 1. In fact, this is my favorite amp DAC for a higher end gaming headset like that, which likes a little bit more power. The Hell 2 is great and just honorable mention to the JDS because uh, this allows you to connect to anything and it measures incredibly well. It's a really clean DAC. The last pick, I know there's a lot here, but the last pick is just to consider the X5 just because it's unique enough from a feature standpoint. Uh, there's nothing that gives you the ability to send your Bluetooth audio to a DAC for anything I discuss or discussed here. 
you still get a lot of the benefits that all the others have. I don't think this is a master at anything. It's just a jack of all trades, but it doesn't have any glaring faults. And because of that, you're paying a premium for it. It's expensive, so it should work well, and it does, but $280 is a tougher pill to swallow. So it's really come down to you know what you think is valuable. So we made it to the end. There was so much to discuss, and I hope that at least certain parts or a good chunk of this video were helpful or valuable to you. Uh, if so, don't forget to like and subscribe, like I said earlier, because I'd love to see it future videos. And with that being said, take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye.